Hey YouTube, it's me, back again! So, today I decided I was going to make a video because I'm off school because it's really windy and, um, yeah, and we all had to get home um, and my friends refused to do something with me because they wanted to go to their houses Oh, those boring people, they didn't want to get stuck with me, I, I know nobody would, but, um, <laughs> so I decided, I know, I'll do a how-to video because I haven't done one of those yet and I like breaking the boundaries you know I don't I just like watching them and thought maybe I'd like to make them and so I thought it's getting to the Christmas season really really freakishly quickly it was just Christmas where did 2011 go I had this conversation yesterday it's still 2010 and then when I sort of get used to the fact that okay maybe it's not 2010 anymore it's 2012 I don't even like think of the year 2011 and it's especially confusing now like at school when you write the date getting the 12 and the 11 in the right places I'm not the brightest of cookies so it kinda confuses me but anyways um yeah so I was gonna show you how to make like a Christmas craft video but the only ones I know how to make at the moment are things you probably know how to do already i.e. um making a snowflake making a paper chain that that's it. So I go on to the interweb um, to ask them some easy Christmas craft ideas. Their idea of easy is so different from mine. So um, I screwed that idea. And now we're going to do some lovely baking. I just need to see if we have any ingredients. But well, while we're at it, check out my slippers. Aren't they so awesomely? Cool. They're really warm as well. They're about the children's book of baking. You'd hope there'd be something easy in that, considering the age of the children on, on the cover. And, and the age of me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to look inside. I'm just going to skip the introduction and all the weird little how-tos at the start of the book. Like, I know how to separate an egg. <laughs> okay, um, just because I get it wrong sometimes doesn't mean I don't know how to do it. Baking tips. Oh god. I can follow your recipe room. Cook's terms. I know what grating is. This is a really offensive egg. Um okay. Ooh. Recipes again. Double berry muffins. Berries are not likely. Shortbread spirals. Mm, quite nice. Um cocoa powder, got. Boiling water. Mm, oh no, I don't have boiling water. Um, butter, probably got. Plain flour, probably got. Caster sugar, hopefully have. And vanilla essence. Okay, Thunderbirds are go. Um, for those of you following the recipe with me, you need two tablespoons of cocoa powder, one tablespoon of boiling water, 200 grams of butter at room temperature, 300 grams of plain flour, 100 grams of caster sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla essence. Um, so first, step one, set the oven to 160 degrees Celsius or 325 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark three. So I'm going to set it to 160 degrees because that's my oven. Oh, perfect. Done that. Okay. Put the cocoa powder into the mug and mix with the boiling water until smooth. Okay, I'm going to boil some water. That might be useful to say. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, um, mug, 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 mug. Mug, oh, I'll use this mug. No, I don't want that mug. Yeah, fine, I'll use this mug. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's just a sign of the kettle boiling. Um, cocoa powder, and that is two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Okay, we'll put it into my mug. A tablespoon is the biggest one, because it's bigger than a dessert spoon. Because you want your table to be bigger than your dessert. What a lovely little remember. I wish you remember it by. Okay, um, can put this back, so use that. You know, waiting. Okay, so the kettle's boiled, and I'm now going to pour the water into my tablespoon. This is a very dangerous task, so make sure you get an adult to help you. 
I'm joking. Just, you know, be careful. And then what do I do? Oh, I mix it. This, this is fun. Okay, so this is my um, chocolate mix. Um, a nice little hint and tip is to use more than one tablespoon of boiling water because that isn't enough. Okay, I am now clean out of butter, so you better not ask me to grease anything. Okay, well I've got just enough to grease, but that's about it. Okay, well, now I'm going to mix it with the flour and the sugar. Okay, I'm pouring in the 100 grams of sugar. Yes, and now the 300 grams of plain flour. Remember, it's plain within shortbread. You do not want it to rise. I'm not actually estimating this is on scales. Ah! Okay, only put a hundred too many grams in there. I'm not thinking it's best to use a camera whilst pouring. So I'm just gonna switch off now. Okay, well I've just managed to get rid of the extra flour and it's now all over my camera and all over the work surface. And yep, in the sugar. But okay, on I go to the mixing. Okay, so that's how mine's looking. On to Step three, spoon half the cookie mixture into the second bowl. My second bowl right here, so I'm just gonna spin it in. Um, won't film this because I need two hands, as I've learned, but you can watch my face through it, okay? Here we are, here's my face, and here's my face spinning. Oh, you might even be able to see a bit of it, if you're very lucky. Hmm. It's about half and half. Okay, so I've got this much in this one, and this much in this one. It's about the same, I'd say. So, second part. Add the cocoa paste to one and the vanilla essence to the other. I will add the cocoa paste to this second bowl. Cocoa paste is kind of bled up a bit. But that's okay. Um, and always remember, yours may not look necessarily just like mine, well, mine doesn't like it necessarily just like the book, so cooking is all open to experiment, and the recipe is just sort of a basis. Ah! It's more just to you what it could end up like. And maybe if you get yours really long, wrong, you'll make something else. Part three of step three. Squeeze the cr crumbs and cocoa paste together with your hands until the crumbs begin to stick together and form an evenly coloured dough. Wash your hands and repeat with the remaining crumbs and the vanilla essence. So I've done that and here's what it looks like. Step 4. Roll out the cocoa dough between two sheets of non-stick baking paper to make a 20 centimetre 8 inch square. So here's my first 20 by 20 square. I'm now going to move on to the cocoa one. I now have my um, cocoa mixture on top of my vanilla mixture. You roll it up into um, a roll like this and then you chill for 15 minutes. Cut the roll into 16 thick slices, place in an ungreased baking sheet and cook for 8 to 10 minutes. Leave the cookies to cool on the baking sheet before serving. And then you're done. Okay, so this is what mine looks like now. I'm just going to cut it into the pieces. And here are the final product. So we've actually eaten quite a few of them now. But yeah, they look pretty good. And they taste. They taste quite good. Um, I would probably recommend that you cook them for longer, just the, maybe a couple more minutes than it says in the recipe book. Because mine actually turned out a bit doughy. But yeah, they taste good. They were quite nice dipped in tea. All in all, I'd maybe give them three stars. I mean, I've tasted better. But you do have to experiment. I personally prefer cho chocolate chip cookies or muffins or brownies or cake or quite a lot of things. But don't get me wrong, they are nice. I just, yeah, you have to try new things and I tried them. And I'll have to try more new things and maybe I'll see you again in this recipe place and maybe I'll see you again in this channel place. So thanks for watching. Bye. And remember, 
always wash up at the end. Yeah. This this is this is good.